Hi, my name's Andy. Welcome to this video series where I'm going to attempt to build a cedar strip canoe. A cedar strip canoe fundamentally is quite simple. You use very thin strips of softwoods to build up the shape of the canoe and then put a single layer of fibreglass on the inside and outside for the structural strength of it. You then finish that with varnish to give it UV protection. The overall process has quite a lot of steps. In my case I wasn't able to source um, pre-machined strips of cedar so I've bought a, a single very large piece of cedar which I'm machining down using small workshop tools into the strips that I need which is a huge job by itself. Those strips have a bead and a cove applied so that they fit neatly together in the shape of the canoe. And hopefully by the spring of 2022 you'll see me launch my canoe. While I was in self-isolation for Covid recently, I read the Canoe Craft book by Ted Moores of the Bear Mountain Boat Company in Canada, almost cover to cover, three or four times. It's an excellent book, it gives a good illustrated guide to um, the complete process of how to build one of these boats. On my return back home, um, I ordered plans from the Bear Mountain Company. Obviously being Canadian, they don't ship to the UK, but there is a UK supplier. And I've been dealing with Barry Biddlecombe of the Cedar Strip Company in England, who's been excellent and very, very helpful. This kit comes, or sorry, this um, plans, they come with a few more pamphlets and basically slimmed down instructions. A couple of sample cedar strips that show the sort of strip that you build the canoe from, and the plans themselves. So the plans come in three sheets. There's the overall layout sheet. In my case this is quite badly printed but I was given a very hefty discount by Barry so I was happy enough. You also have then the stem mould station which you transfer onto plywood and use at the fore and after bow and stern of the boat. And then the mould stations. Each of these is transferred onto plywood or any other board using carbon paper which is also supplied in the kit. I bought this baby bandsaw specifically for the job of milling down these bits of, well, this, this single piece of wood. Um, and because it's quite lightweight, I'm really pushing the limit of what it's designed for here. The, the timber has been quite wet, which causes more friction as it goes through the bandsaw. It's wet than I hoped, to be honest. You can see some of the sort of fuzz coming off it. It's not, it's not cutting as dry as I'd like it to. So I'll probably have to age the strips a little bit in the house for a few weeks until I use them. But that also slows down the bandsaw. The bandsaw has been bogging down a little bit and occasionally stopping as you've seen in, in some of the footage. So I'm going to attempt to change the ratio to slow the blade, which will slow the cut down but should also prevent it bogging down. cut nine strips out of probably 12 in total that I'm going to get out of this board. Um, as I go on however my bandsaw, which admittedly is totally inappropriate for this job, is getting blunter and blunter and it's wandering very badly in the wood now. I'm struggling to keep the cut straight so I've actually resorted to moving the fence almost completely out of the way and hand marking the wood and trying to follow the line by hand. 
Now, that's messy, and the, the resulting cuts, you might be able to see along the length of this, the resulting cuts are quite wavy, but they are consistently above the minimum width, and so when I put them through the thickness planer later, they, um, they should come out still usable. You can see now these two knots, which are on the surface, come out on the side of the piece of wood now. I can still use the majority of the length of that blank, just not the last 60 centimetres or so. Okay, so that's the first major job complete. I've taken the large cedar board I bought and I've ripped it down into planks which are just about 20 to 25 millimetres thick. The next job is to rip each of these planks down into the thin strips that I'll need, probably about 12 across each plank. Um, I have one thicker strip which is the last one I came to. I'm going to keep it that thickness and only rip it down if I need it for the build. I should only need about two thirds of this wood though, so I should have quite a lot of spare. The bandsaw was massively inadequate for the job and the blade is going straight in the bin now but the reality is I'm very very pleased with what I've managed to do. The, the wandering blade meant that the thickness does get cut down in places but I think there's nowhere that's below 20 millimeters and in places it's up to about 25 as well so it's, they're not consistently cut but once they dry a little bit I'll put them through the planer and bring them all down to 20 millimeters I need. That's all for this episode. Thanks for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you do want to follow along with the build, please do subscribe and feel free to leave any comments down below. In the next episode, I'm going to be building the strong back, the long low table that you see behind me, used to construct the canoe. I look forward to seeing you then. Bye for now.